So what I have behind me is my Kubota L4701 with a lawn aerator. Now this specific lawn aerator is made by Everything Attachments. It's six foot wide, weighs in the neighborhood of 1,200 to 1,500 pounds. I'm not exactly sure. I'm borrowing it from a friend, so I don't have all the specs. I'm told it's a plug aerator. I guess the spikes go into the ground, grab a piece of dirt, and then the next time it rolls around, it pushes that piece of dirt out. I'm not much into lawn care. I don't know much about it, but uh, I've got a lawn nerd buddy that told me aerating is great for your lawn, and uh, you're supposed to do it in the spring or fall. Now, if you watched any of my videos, you know that I live in a swamp, and in the springtime, it just wouldn't be feasible. I mean, it's wet now, and we're in the fall. It's uh, October 30th. It's a nice day out today about uh, 55 60 degrees and we're going to give this thing a shot let's take a closer look at it so like i was saying this is a plug aerator and you can see it's got these like teeth on it and i ran it across the lawn just to get it over here but when it goes in this tooth picks up some dirt and then you've got this and then the next time it rolls around this piece just pushes out and lands in the yard i don't know why it's good for your lawn couldn't tell you um I'm just told it is, so we're gonna give it a shot today. How this thing works is this spins freely, like so, and you just pull it with your tractor. Straight lines only, you don't wanna be putting unnecessary stress when you're taking turns and stuff. You can see these are loosely in here, and I bet if you took a turn while these were on the ground, it would bend them over. Now, uh, I know everything attachment stands behind their products, and they probably wouldn't bend because I know they make good products, but, uh, since it's not mine, I'm I'm not willing to test it. I think these things cost like $2,500 or so. That's why I'm borrowing it and I didn't buy one. By the way, I'm Elliot. This is everything, Elliot. Thanks for stopping by.
right, so I've done about uh, four rows with it so far across the lawn. And you can see these are the plugs I was talking about here. I don't know what the optimal speed is, you know. I don't know if you're supposed to be going fast, slow, or what, but we'll take a look in the lawn here. Now you can see the marks that it's leaving in the lawn, and I mean, there's definitely a hole in there. I can put my whole finger down in there, so apparently this is good for your lawn. But you can see it's throwing these little dirt chunks all over the place. And I guess you're just supposed to leave these on top of the lawn? That's what I understand. I don't know. But it seems to be working. I don't know if faster is better, slower is better, or what, but maybe this will actually dry up my lawn a little bit. They're like little grass turds, you know? I got most of the, uh, what I would call the backyard done. And it just goes to show you how fast I could mow the lawn if I uh, had a mower for that. But that being said, you can see the mess it leaves all over the place because the tractor is so heavy. I use that John Deere to mow normally. Not as heavy, doesn't create as much ruts. Now, uh, we're going to go to the back corner here because this is where the hardest part of my lawn is. And I want to see if it works just as well as it did in the front. That front part of the lawn is pretty soft, so we'll just, uh, I don't know, we'll stop here. Now, the holes aren't as prominent over here as they are up front because this is harder, but there are still grass turds all over the place, so it is working. Um, oh, there's a hole. Let's see, where's another one? No. You know, they say finding the hole is a personal problem. Oh, there it is. See? Even a blind squirrel gets a nut every once in a while. There's another one right there. It doesn't seem to be going as deep where up front I could stick my whole hand in there. Back here, I'm only getting to about right there. So maybe like an inch and a half. So maybe like an inch and a half of penetration, which, which is about average. That's 
that's that's enough penetration. It's all you really need. I mean, why do you need six, seven, eight inches of penetration? This is enough. Anywho, it's working. Again, grass turds. So, yeah, I don't know what it does, but it's good for the lawn. So we'll leave it at that. So using a tool like this is not something that you're gonna see the benefits of overnight. I mean, it's gonna be spring before I can tell you, hey, aeration did anything or not. You're supposed to do it during a growing cycle. Like I'd mentioned earlier, either spring or fall. Again, it's way too swampy here in spring. I mean, it's swampy now and we're in fall. It hasn't rained in like a week, but I don't know. There's no other good time to do it. I don't want to do it in the middle of summer because it's so dry that the grass doesn't grow. You know, I guess I could plant it out where I have a two weeks of dry and you know, it's going to rain for the next three days. I guess I could plan that out, but I didn't have it. So I'm doing it when I can. I'm at the mercy of borrowing it from a buddy. And that's all I could say about that. I am pretty pleased with it. Uh, there are a lot of rocks in my lawn and you can tell when it goes over a rock. You can hear it kind of bounce up a little bit. And just a quick look, I don't see anything bent. Yeah, that's confirmed. There, are, there aren't any that are bent. So I guess those little steel uh, prongs or cylinders, whatever you want to call them, are stronger than I thought they would be. But I'm going to finish my lawn. That's going to be it for today's video. I'm happy with the way it works. I'm happy with, well, I, I can't say I'm happy with the grass turds because Normally you have to pick turds out of your lawn, but I'm going to leave these turds. Until the next video, I hope you guys have a great day.